anointing upon your life is also in accordance with the word of God in your life the quality of your anointing is determined by the quality of the word of God in your life the day you encounter wealth in the word is the day you have been registered into the realm of wealth that is why at I am we emphasize make your requests and prayers to God and always center it and place it on the word of God. I felt there is a need for us to understand the principles of growth in the word of God. Growing in the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, tell them growth in the word of God. I, I give you permission. If your neighbor is religious, the kind that is holier than the Pope, turn to the next neighbor and tell them, since my neighbor did not understand me, I'm now talking grow in the word see I, I, I'm allowing you if your neighbor looks like they are too busy for them to reply turn to the one behind you and tell them pastor says because let me tell you the state of your neighbor is contagious somehow because that neighbor is cold the coldness may wrap into you somehow and in the end the vibrant person within the next two minutes they become cold I pray that by the time we are done may you be hot for Jesus May you be hot that hot plate, the temperature of hot plate cannot be compared to the one spiritually you're going into. May yours be to the level of boiling magma that when anything, anything that contends with your faith rises against you, nothing will be able to stand because your faith, tell your neighbor your faith. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. As you get into the one, Father, we thank you for the word. We bless your name. We thank you because when you're praying, you say it your kingdom come may your will be done will meaning purpose intention and word may it be done on earth that is in heaven we pray today oh god that as we dwell into your word spirit of god speak to us precept upon precept that father in the end these vessels of clay shall return glory unto your name in the name of jesus we pray it and the church say amen. Amen. The Bible says Colossians 3 and verse 16. Everybody, if you're there, say amen. The Bible says, Let the word of Christ. Don't you never tell them, let the word of Christ. If I, 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 I'm assuring you, if they are cold and they are religious, I, I'm giving you permission to speak to your next neighbor. Tell them, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You see, I have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, the source of the manifestation of the glory of God is connected to the quality of the word that you have within you. That's right. I, I, am I making sense? The degree of the manifestation of God in your life I'm meaning, I'm talking to men and women who want to start working in the realities of certain things in the kingdom of God. You know, there are some people who, I used to ask myself, how do men like the, 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 the generals of God, men like Smith Wigglesworth, men like these, these men who sought God, who do not, ladies, by the ladies and gentlemen, have formal education. 
When you read the story of Smith Wigglesworth, this man studied, he learned English by reading the King James Bible. That is how we got to know his English. Self-taught. But yet this man moved, Smith Wigglesworth moved in the reality of the miraculous. He could not tell stories. This man himself was, a, was an episode of miracles. How do you explain such things? Praise the name of the Lord. How do you explain how a man sitting in a train carriage on his way going to preach the gospel in one of the towns in the carriage there are almost like 20, more than 20 people in the carriage and when these people were there some were smoking some were swearing some were doing all this and you know and, and, and in the midst he was just seated just, tell your neighbor just seated he did not even utter what he did not tell them guys confess Christ he was just, but his presence was so contagious that where he was suddenly it was just a moment and the environment turned people began repenting in the carriage where he was you know you know person you are sitting and all of a sudden one two three it's like one two three go they begin repenting oh god forgive me for my sin forgive and then suddenly they are baptized in the holy spirit before even they confess christ this man was just sitting there in the carriage and you know he was amazed until afterwards one of them asked him sir are you a pastor them yes i'm an evangelist i'm a preacher how does such impact happen ladies and gentlemen that is the glory the latter church is supposed to be walking in amen. amen and i'll tell you where we are right now in the church it is no more you running to where it happens it is you becoming the source the manufacturer you know there's something about there's something about jesus and the devil the first temptation the devil asked him if you're the son of god stones into bread then he said it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every on every I've discovered when the word of God dwells richly within you you do not need daily bread you become the maker of the daily bread ah. you see some of you are here to declare miracles shall become an ordinary occurrence to you you shall suddenly begin to walk in the miraculous where others see it as impossible because this word is richly dwelling in you it shall become the factory that manufacture miracles when others are waiting you shall not wait the word that richly dwells in you shall begin to manufacture when they are waiting to be laid hands on the word of God that dwells rich in you shall begin to manufacture it to you supernatural shall be natural Paul tells the Colossians let the word of Christ richly see there's a difference between it dwelling in you and richly dwelling in you very simple but yet it's a mystery praise the name of the Lord it's a very simple reality but yet it is a powerful mystery for the kingdom of God he says what he says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And everybody say, Amen. I have discovered that this word according to the level that you walk in the word ladies and gentlemen that is the determinant of the manifestation of the kingdom of god in your life according to the level let me tell you in these things there is no shortcut if your word is little expect manifestation to be little if your word dwells richly then expect the manifestation to be more powerful. Expect the action to be much more powerful than how it is. If you hear me say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be sharing with us the levels in the word of, of God. The levels we attain if we need to grow in this word of God. And I believe by the end, by the time we are through today, 
somebody shall understand and realize where their level of word is whether they need to increase and improve or they are comfortable with where they are and they say okay let me be here praise the name of the lord somebody say amen hallelujah do you know that the word of god also is the determinant of the anointing of god upon your life Oh, you did not know. The anointing, what is the anointing? The anointing is the supernatural ability, the supernatural action of the Spirit of God upon your life. And how many of you know that the Spirit of God operates where there is word? That is why in the beginning, the greatest capital you need, tell your neighbor, tell them, the greatest capital you need in life is the word revealed to your spirit man. Mr. Chairman, when a man has wisdom, problems are going to be sorted out. I have seen billionaires who are foolish crumble to the worst paupers in life. And I've seen men who are in grass who decided to seek the wisdom of the word of God. Grow from grace to grace. Grow from paupers to billionaires. What is the level of the word of God in your life is what I want to ask you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to tell you to lift up your chair when, when you know, most times, that is why, I, I think that is why Mr. Chairman, growing up in the era that we grew up in, uh, it was confused, it was messed up. We know that receiving from God is you lifting up your chair and shouting a few hallelujahs and saying, God, I'm receiving. And you think that is what you're going to do. It is not the way we receive from God, ladies and gentlemen. When the world was to be created, the spirit of God needed capital. And what was the capital? Let there be. When the spirit of, you see, the whole time the spirit of God was hovering, he was waiting. He was, I wish I know what was, I wish, I wish I am can understand. I wish I am can understand that when they begin to stand in the word, if the word richly dwells in them, I am going to work. The spirit of God, the Bible says, was hovering over the face of the deep, but he was powerless. He was doing nothing until when God said, let there be, and he began to work. was just waiting for one one tell your neighbor one word revealed to you sorts out your issue one word you may not have it all but one word one word one word take up your bed and walk one word is all you need somebody say amen today if we pick up if we get this thing I'm telling you, we are going, even the sky is going to, not going to be our living. It's not going to hinder us. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, why do I mean, why do I say that the anointing upon your life is also in accordance with the word of God in your life? The quality of your anointing is determined by the quality of the word of God in your life. It's very important. Very important. Otherwise, who wants me to make this shock? Who wants me to make this shock? Do you know Pastor, do you know Pastor Ellen? Pastor Julie? Mr. Chairman? If it was because we pray a lot that we prosper, intercessors would have been the wealthiest people on the world. One of the things I've discovered with intercessors, their prayer life is high, but their word life is here. And they begin to say, God, you are not fair. How come so and so has just come in the church? And you, God moves according to his. Hallelujah. I said, God moves in accordance with his word. With his word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That is why we, we have to look especially on the mystery of the word of God. But before we get there, open your Bibles. If you may. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Get into your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And I want us all to declare it and read it firmly as we read. What does the Bible say? Hebrews 4 verse 12. Yes, sir. For the word of God. For the word. Let, 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 us, let us take it slowly. Let us take it slowly. For the word of God is what? Number one. Living. Is alive. Ah. Huh? 
You see, you, you just think it is, it is scripture you are carrying about that you are speaking. The word of God is alive. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why at I am we emphasize make your requests and prayers to God and always center it and base it on the word of God. Because in the word of God there is a personality that you are invoking. There's a big difference, Pastor Helen, when I stand and pray and say, oh God, heal me. And when I stand and say, Father, in your word, in Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. There's a big difference. We are both asking for healing, but because the one who spoke it in the word invoked the personality and life in the word, healing will come to them. See, it is not about how much you cried, but it is about how much you invoke. Somebody say amen. amen. For the word of God is what? Is living. Is alive. Mm. And powerful. And what? Powerful. Another person says and active. For the word of God is living and what? Speak these ones. If there is anything you are going to remember today. Remember these two ones. For the word of God is what? Is living and is what? And is powerful. Sharper than any sharper sword. than any double-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. My goodness, the word of God, in other words, is the one that can discern the spiritual issues and then get in there and then activate them such that they become a reality to the soul. You know what the soul is? The soul man is the one that perceives, that understands. What the word of God does is that it will go into the spiritual realm and make clear what the soul in other words wouldn't have perceived. Amen. If you hear me say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So the word of God is alive. When you pick that you started your journey. Tell your neighbor, the word of God is what? Is what? Is alive and what? And active. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So, First Peter chapter 2, first Peter, Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1. I beg your pardon. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. That is, we shall get there later on. But Second Peter chapter one and verse four. Listen, here are these strong, strong revelation. What does the Bible say? Second Peter one verse four. Yes. By which are given unto us. By which has been given unto us what? Exceedingly great. Ah, yeah. Is that what your Bible says? I, I hope you have your Bible with you because now here, by which has been given to us what? Exceedingly great. Exceedingly great. And precious promises. And precious promises. In that book of yours, in that Bible of yours, there is a great and exceedingly great promises. That is what? That by this. By this, listen, but listen to this. By this, yes. You might be partakers of we divine nature. We become the partakers of God's divine nature. Do you know what it means when you're operating in God's divine nature? You see, with God, Jesus on the 33 years that he was on earth, there was no time you, you heard that he was sick. When it is God's divine nature in you, that means, ladies and gentlemen, it is not Nakafero that is going to be here. It is going to be something extraordinary about you. It is going to be the thing that was upon David that when Israel was afraid of a giant called Goliath, the divine of God upon this young boy. This boy was even 16 years not cultured, not trained in the military warfare, but when the divine nature of God sat upon this young man, suddenly Goliath was a nobody. What causes tears to others, to you is ordinary. 
when the divine nature, when you partake of the divine nature of God within you, ladies and gentlemen, you are not the tail, you are the head. You call nations and nations come running to you. You see, we always claim these promises, but I'm telling you, they come to you because you have the divine nature of God in you. And by this, what does the Bible say? We partake what? That by this yes. we might be partakers of the divine nature. We are partakers of the what? Divine nature. Of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Bless the name of the Lord. Romans 1 and 16. Listen to what the Bible says. I want to show you the word that you carry. That you despise. This word ladies and gentlemen. You, it is what is going to grant you that which your father failed to do. It is that which is going to give you access to the things that when you talk about them in your family or in from in your lineage, they look like they are beyond you. What does the Bible say? Romans 1 16. Huh? For I am, for not, I am ashamed not ashamed of the gospel. Of of the gospel. For what? For it is the power of it God. It is the power of God. And to salvation. And to us in salvation. This is what it means. The gospel, ladies and gentlemen, that many of us are despising is the power of God in our work of salvation. In other words, the word of God in your life determines the power of God in your life. You want me to repeat that? The word of God in your life determines the power of God in your life. You see, I remember when we were just beginning this year, many had prayer requests. Oh God, I need a billion dollar contract. Oh God, I need to build a mansion that when my villagers, when the people in the village see me, it will confound my enemies and give and, and give and make my friends celebrate with me. Oh God, give me such and such. But let me tell you, do you have the power that attracts it? Many of us have discovered it is true, we have prayed and God is releasing it. But there has to be a power that attracts it to come to our life. In other words, when you are weak, then that means the strength to pull, to attract whatever has been released to you shall also be less. Men that have the power of God dwelling in them are men that can attract things. You, 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 you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I said tonight, may you operate in the power of attraction. Yeah. That when you attract, you shall attract that which always is the abode of kings. May it be to you as they call a commoner. May it come your way. What kings fight for, may it be that for it is ordinary. You shall walk in it because the power of the gospel. That is what Paul is saying. I am not afraid. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is what? For it is the power of God unto salvation. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. To so everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Everybody say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. So, with these realities in the word of God, then why is it that many Christians profess and confess, yet very few see the result? Ladies and gentlemen, it is hidden in the power of God in your life. Or more so, it is hidden in the quality of the word of God in your life. One day, verse minister put it this way. I was, reading, I, was, I, was, I was reading something one time and he said, Many Christians call Holy Ghost fire. But how many can speak 16 scriptures off head? the statement said Bishop Oedepo has a morning glory in his office he wakes up at 5 from 5 till 8 he's in his office and you know what this guy is doing he's reading the word meditating upon it sitting down and saying Lord you see look out for any general and I'll tell you something about their, time, about their life they have a time that they set aside of God. The problem with us is busy as we are, we expect God to work with us on the basis of how he works with these men of God. It is impossible. These men take time. Take time to have a quality of the word of God in their life. If you hear me say amen.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the quality of the word of God determines the power of God that works in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because the, how do I explain the word of God? The word of God is the raw material on which faith operates. How do I explain the word of God? The word of God is the key which the spirit of God uses when he is to work in your life. So in other words, less word, less manifestation. More word, more manifestation. Now, what kind of word am I talking about? Because it's also another thing. Pastor, you mean if I can recite more than uh, f 10 scriptures in my life, I have, a, I have a word of God in my life, uh, am I going to move in power? No, it's not what I meant. What do I mean when I say the word? Ladies and gentlemen, I mean the word that has been revealed. Because we can all speak scripture for God so loved the world. One pastor, I remember it was uh, Psalms 23. And in Psalms 23, there was a, it was told of a story, uh, Mr. Chairman. It was a Bible seminar. And that time, the students, I think it was the last year of the students, and then they called them, each and every one of them, to speak about Psalms 23. So, when they called the various students to speak, and obviously, some came with a lot of grammar, a lot of eloquence. When they could speak, they would clap and say, marvelous, this guy has spoken to us. Praise the name of God. But one guy, because it was in Nigeria, this guy had pidgin English. You know pidgin? When this guy speaks pidgin English, praise the name of the Lord, you can, instead of asking, they say ax. So you think he's, you're looking for the ax, yet he's asking you. You understand what I'm meaning? Praise the name of the Lord. So, with pidgin English spoke, and by the end of his sermon, everyone was crying. So, like the ones that are baffled, they, one of them come and ask this guy, but sir, we all preach from Psalms 23. What is it about you that when you stood and talked about Psalms 23, every one of us could not stand on our, could not sit on our chairs. All of us were, were taken up by the presence of God. Amen. This guy made a very simple statement. He said that many of you were preaching Psalms 23, but I was preaching the shepherd in Psalms 23. Did you get that? They were preaching Psalms 23. He was talking about the shepherd in Psalms 23. There is a difference between you speaking and you declaring out of revelation. When these guys were preaching, they were preaching out of experience. When he was speaking, he was speaking out of revelation. That is why Psalms 119, before we get into the level of the word, Psalms 119 and 130, very importantly, very importantly, that moment, what does Psalms 119 and 130 say? Very important, listen. 137. Listen, what does it say? The entrance of the your words. The entrance of your words gives light. Gives light. Gives understanding. Let us. Until when the word of God, when it enters your spirit, man, gives you light. Meaning that you were not aware of it before, and then suddenly your spirit man picks it. Let me explain this scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, the entrance, tell your neighbor, the entrance. You can speak louder. Tell your neighbor, the entrance of the word of God gives light. Do you know that in that word of God, there are certain personalities that you can, if you get to understand them, you can, your life can be revolutionized and turn around. What do I mean? In the word of God, there is a personality called wealth. Ah, you did not know. Proverbs 8, 17, I love those that love me and those that diligently seek me shall find me. Listen, there is a personality called wealth waiting for you. Huh? The day you encounter wealth in the world is the day you have been registered into the realm of wealth. In the word of God, there is a personality called healing. But 
But why healing is elusive to many of us is we have not yet encountered the personality in the word of God called healing. Can you imagine? 66 books. But every day God is waiting to reveal himself to you in another way. Did you know that? He's waiting to reveal himself. The problem is that we are so busy that we pass by. Never take the moment in the word to be a usual moment. Any moment in the word of God is a moment for revelation. So this is what the Bible says. It says, the entrance of your words, read it for me, gives light. And listen what it does. It does what? It does what? It gives what? It gives understanding. It gives understanding unto the simple, to the simple one. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment or the day you'll begin to get the illumination of spiritual realities in the word of God is the day even your prayer is going to have a turnaround. Otherwise, tell your neighbor, otherwise, you're always going to be complaining in church. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So, this word of God is so real. But how many in this congregation can say, Pastor, well, okay, let me explain to you. Mr. Chair, maybe they have not yet picked it. The, the, how many of you, let me you, raise, raise up your hands. How many of you say, there was a day, Pastor, I read the word. And that day when I read the word, it clicked in my spirit, man. There is something I picked when I was reading the word. How many How many have ever experienced that? When I was reading the word, suddenly, there is something, there is, there is an anointing. So, first wait, how many? Lift, it, lift, lift, lift up your hands. Uh, like this, like this. For the rest, I pray, may you get into that experience one day. Because until when you get to that time, whereby when you read the word, your spirit man becomes aware. You know, the spiritual realm, Mr. Chairman, is so near to us. <laughs> it is so near to us, yet so far away. Do you know that that day when you read that one and you're like, goodness, today how come the word of God has been so real to us? That day, ladies and gentlemen, your spirit man had just accessed the spiritual realm of that word. That is the power of the revealed word. The day you pick that thing, actually, that is, this is what I tell people. The day you pick that word, I usually tell them, pray in that word. Because it is not just an ordinary word. It is something that you are connecting into. Something that is going to turn your life around. That is the word I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Uh, let me once again. How many say they need to connect to that time? They need to get to that time whereby when they read the word of God, it becomes real to them. How many, how many say they desire to have that time? Be honest because I'm going to release the anointing. May you get there. In the name of Jesus, as you've desired it, you access it. Let the next time you read the word of God be a moment whereby suddenly a reality is going to fall upon you. That you're reading, you're going to say, goodness. You know that time whereby when you read and suddenly you feel goosebumps, you feel you feel there's something that has taken over there. Moment, that moment is the moment of revelation. That is the moment that manufactures power behind the work of the Christian life. Am I too much today? I'm asking you, am I too much today? How many say we are still with you, Pastor? I don't hear you somewhere. How many say if you can shout an amen? I can know how many say we are still with you, Pastor? Okay, okay, because I'm seeing people are getting so quiet, so I'm scared. Am I getting too fast for, for myself or what? Okay, so the day you get to that revelation is the day life begins to turn around. In the word of God, there is a personality called wealth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding that is waiting to be dug out. Hmm? I don't hear you. Hello? Amen. Open for me Isaiah 12 and verse 3. Maybe, be, be, let, me get, let me show you what this means. Isaiah 12 and verse 3. Then, I, then we get into this and then we, we close. Yes. Therefore with joy shall Therefore you with joy shall you do what? Draw water. Shall you? In other words, 
every revel let me tell you this today you may not have understood it every revelation you pick concerning the word is an opportunity to draw virtue from the spiritual realm into your life every moment of revelation in the word of god is an opportunity for you to draw healing for your sick body every opportunity of revelation in the word of god is an opportunity for you to draw wealth for your life therefore with joy shall you do what shall you draw water shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation? where are these wells hidden these wells are hidden in the word so you, you've been carrying your bible around and you do not know that you are carrying wells <laughs> ah, it is like a man who is poor yet they don't know that on the land where they are there is gold that is how many Christians have been we are busy telling God father we are poor yet God is saying come on you guys you are standing on the gold many in the church you know why we are having many church nomads and pastoral is spiritual ones are meaning not, not the physical ones you know why? It's because where they are standing, because they did not understand the need to draw in where they are standing. Hello? In the end, they are always running away, yet where they are is where they need to draw from. Amen? You know, there's one thing that used to disturb me most times. Have you ever heard of such statements like, you people, you, are, you young boys, you are still junking. We are the ones who moved with the late Balabe Kubo. We are the ones who started Miracle Center when, when, when uh, Bishop Kainja was, was still believing God in the papyrus seat. But when you look at the man telling you, ah, the story that is telling you and him, they don't match. How many have, how many have seen such, such people? You guys, you've just confessed Christ recently. I wish you knew. We are the ones who prayed Miracle Center. Thank you for praying, but how come I don't see the evidence of your praying? I've discovered these are the men. They have the wells, but they do not know how to tap into the wells. Ladies and gentlemen, everything we need on this world is hidden in the word of God. And the day you embrace revelation is the day you begin to draw from the word. So now we know that revelation is just simply you getting access to the wells in the word of God. That is what revelation is. Amen. So you find that there are many noisemakers today, but very few operating in the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the mystery is hidden here. Make every one moment a moment whereby, you know, anytime I'm, I'm reading the word of God, let me tell you the truth. I am excited. I'm like, God, thank you for another opportunity. I am going to draw. I'm tapping something today. I'm going to the wells. I'm tapping something from your word. You know, when you have that, when prophet stands on the pulpit and says, I sense the presence of God, you will already have connected because you know what she's talking about. But most times he says, you people, connect. You know why most times instead of connecting, you're watching like as though you're looking at circus. Remember circus on UTV. You know why? It's because even the word of God is so narrow in you. So what is God going to release upon your life when the word level is so narrow within your life? Tell your neighbor, revelation, revelation is for exploits. Turn to your next neighbor, tell them, revelation, revelation. is for redemption. Revelation. The day you and I begin to walk in the reality of the revealed word of God, what we call the Rema word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I see, I see billionaires here who just did not know that they needed to tap into it. But tonight, tell your neighbor, tap into it. Connect into it. Quickly, we're getting into the levels of the world. The first level I want to talk about is what they call the level of the water. What does it mean when you say the water level? John chapter 4 and verse 14. Jesus was speaking to a Samaritan woman whom he had just met on that well that day. And this is what he tells her. Listen, he says. John 4, 14. Yes. But whosoever drinks of the water. Then he says, but whosoever.
whoever will drink of the water that I shall give him that I shall give him shall never thirst shall never what shall never what shall never what why do I say this is the first level of the word it's just simply this we all know that when a thirsty man we all say that this is what before I get to that point we all know scientists say man can live without food for how many days for seven days you can live without food but man cannot survive without water for I think four or five days four days do you know that in your body 70% of your body is water it is the essential so when we start with the water level we are talking about the essential level of the word walk in purity please God this one, every Christian, it is mandatory in salvation. When we say the water level, it is what removes the ignorance from you. Oh, pastor, at I am, there is a preacher that preaches about purity. You know, now, because if you are a Christian who is working and you do not know that purity, without purity you cannot see God, what are you doing in church? <laughs> Pastor Julia said, you are just an accompaniment. You know what accompaniment is? When Ellie is playing the keyboard uh, and, uh, and the musicians are dancing, the drums are just the accompaniment to give pace. So, y y with or without you, we can still move on. You understand what I'm saying? Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Here. If you're a Christian and you don't, and, and you've been working in salvation and you don't know that gossip hinders the presence of God, what are you doing in church? These ladies and gentlemen are the basics. Jesus tells the Samaritan lady, if you drink, you shall not be thirsty again. He's telling her, get to the awareness. Get to know what I want. Get to know the basics. Because afterwards, I'm taking you to another realm. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so funny that many Christians year after year are still water level Christians. You know how I know a church that is water level? One preacher has put it this way. The congregation gives the preacher the word to say to them. The state of the hearts of the congregation gives the preacher what to speak to them. So if your pastor is always telling you, you guys change, you guys Walk in purity. Know that, hey, goodness, Father, we are still in the beginning level. <laughs> and that level, ladies and gentlemen, does not pull mansions. It just pulls 100,000 and daily bread. I'm telling you the reality. It is daily bread. So if your pastor is still telling you, guys, God hates gossip. This week, next month, the other month, guys, change God. Let me tell you, you'll never go beyond that level. If it is salary, if it is 100,000, you'll be there because the amount or the quality of the word of God in your life determines the power that attracts the great things into your life. Amen. Water level. You always need to be reminded. Come early for service. Hey, tell your neighbor, we're still in water level. Yet you're believing God. Father, I thank you. I see myself be to getting my see marriage does not come from water level, ladies and gentlemen. With your gossip, gossip that, that is the, those are the basics. Insubordination, disobedience, these are basics. Elementary, that is what the Bible says. And yet imagine you are here still on the elementary issues and you believe in God for greater things. Tell your neighbor zero. That is the harsh reality. In other words, within you, you don't have the power that attracts. All you have is for you to survive. So until when we get out from the basics, there is nothing we are going to see that is going to confound our enemies and give news to those that celebrate us. He said, if you believe in me, and you drink of this water, you shall not be thirsty again. 
In other words, he's talking about refreshment. Your spirit man was in a time when he didn't, was not aware that these things do not please God. And now you are getting to the awareness that, oh, I need to walk a life. I need to submit to authority. I need to respect the anointing. I need these ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if you do not have these as your basic starters, you are still far away from the blessing. God, how come in that church there is no blessing? It is not that there is no blessing. What is the level of the word within you? You are just being refreshed. You know what refresh is? You are about to die and then they say, give him a cup of water. Hey, and you revived. Oh, I was about to go, but I've returned. Glory to God. Praise God. But that is where you are. <laughs> you are just to be revived and then you are just <laughs> cup of water. Because if a man is dying and give him a cup of water, you can be revived. But that is where you stop. <laughs> Ephesians 5.26 this is what the Bible says. You know, until when the church gets to this reality. Yes. Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 26. 5, what does the Bible say? 26. Yes. That he might that sanctify, he might sanctify and, cleanse it and cleanse it with, a washing of with water the washing of the water by the word. By the word. Cleansing. You hear me? The elementary if by this time as a born again Christian you do not know that you should come to church and pray or that you should be seeking God sometime and set aside the time of prayer and fasting in your life or that you should be tithing and giving offering and seed and these are basics yet let there be financial conference everyone will be running there God is opening oh, windows of heaven. You'll be saying, I receive. Let me tell you, there is no. Tell your neighbor, quit receiving until when you deal with the level of the water in your life. I receive. Uh, Joyce Meyer wrote a certain book about financial prosperity. Uh, uh, these, are, these are anointed authors. But until when you yourself, you are still sting, you don't give fast food, you don't give offer, you don't give tithe, and you're saying, God, I receive, I'm believing God for a state of art car, that when it passes, even the president's entrance will stand and give side and salute for it to pass by. That when I pass by, the village will stand and say, who is this local chairman Elsie that has come? Yet it is me, an original child of the village. If you don't yet know the basics, all these things are going to be far from you. That is why, day in, day out, we thank God our mother comes back and reminds us, you people love Jesus. You people stop gossiping. You people, and I'm going to, who, how many want to know the day, we're going to, the day you're going to get into the new level? How many want to know the day? The day you hear, mom now, after a time, she has not said stop gossiping. And she's saying God is releasing a prophetic wind, a prophetic cloud, and she's releasing certain mysteries. That means you know, oh, we have shifted. But until, if it is the same thing coming back over and over, visiting preacher, stop gossip. <laughs> you are going to be there. If you hear me say amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you, have, who has said now, we understand that one. Let me get to the next level. When you get from the basics and begin to understand the Christian walk, then you'll get what they call the milk level in the word of God. Now like for any child that is growing up with milk, milk is necessary for the growth of teeth. Mothers know this. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a certain diet you give to a child as the child is growing up such that they get to the point whereby they can have certain immunity. They can, you know, praise the name of the Lord. The milk level in others, ladies and gentlemen, is now, yes, it is much more better than the water level. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says, First Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. Growth is what I'm talking about. Amen. Because in the little sense I did, they say protein is what? Bodybuilding, isn't it? It is what builds the person. So milk is, in other words, the milk level of the word is what is going to build you now. Build your faith to begin to believe God for certain things. Build your prayer life that you begin to have muscle. Build your fasting life. That is the milk level. I don't know if I'm talking to someone. That is when now you are getting, you are launching now into another dimension of revelation. It is something that you're getting into that is now not the ordinary, but you are now, you are much better than the starters. Amen? 
Hallelujah. You know what milk is needed for? You know, milk is needed for growth of bones, resistance, resilience. When the milk level of, your, of the word of God is in your life, is when now you can stand. You can make a stand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I, I don't hear you. May you access that level. I said may you level. Enough of having infants or men who are about to die and they just need refreshment. Get out of refreshment. Start the level of growth. Because when you start the work of growth, ladies and gentlemen, that is when now you are starting to access certain things. Mm. Hello? Amen. I don't hear you. Hello? Amen. Milk level is the foundation classes. Now is when they begin. That is when now begin, you begin to know, oh, we need to handle our foundations. We need to do this. We are now getting there. We are now walking. We are getting into the place now whereby we need to get into the place of power. Remember, the, Romans 1, 6, has just said that I'm not afraid of the gospel for it is what? For it is the power of God. We need to get there into the realm of power. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the milk level, is now when we get to know these things. It's when now we get to know the stand of our salvation. It's now when we get, we get to know the basics of our faith. You understand? It's now when you get to know, why am I born again? You can stand and confidently and boldly defend your faith in Jesus. But hey, this is not where it stops. Because we need to grow. And the word of God is glory. Let me give you one statement. Let me read for me this statement. Read for me uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and 8. Listen. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. I beg your pardon. 3 verse 18. Yes, what does the Bible say? We, what we, we all. We all, not we, just some, but we all with the what? With unveiled faith. With unveiled. That means we are not covered. We have revelation in these things. Because God has revealed, the spirit of God has given us revelation in the word. We with unveiled faith will do what? Beholding. Behold the what? As in, As in the mirror shall behold what? The glory of the, the glory Lord. of God from what? Are changed into the Are same transformed image. into the same image. That means, ladies and gentlemen, the more revelation in the word of God, the more transformation into the image of the glory of God is how you will be. Amen. That means, like a child who grows, you are not supposed to be like a child in nappies. You have to grow every time. In this level of the word, ladies and gentlemen, we grow God does not expect you to remain as one who is taking milk. At one point, if you take milk and you're taking milk over and over, you'll develop a situation called kwashia ko. You are not having the right nutrients. Amen. So we need to grow. That is why I want to introduce you to the next level. It is called solid food. Now, ladies and gentlemen, any child, when they come of age and they are weaned from their mother's breast, it is when they'll tell them, begin to give them solid food. This is what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. Hebrews 5 verse 14. What does the Bible say? But solid food belongs to them. But that are, solid food belongs to them who are what? That are of full age. Who have now come of maturity. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, is when we have matured. I know many of you know that at this age, what you attract is not what you attracted when you were still in the water and the milk levels. Here now, you are operating in a certain dimension. Am I talking to someone? See, enough of you praying a lot, but when they look at results, zero. Start making sure the word grows in you. But solid food does what? But solid food belongs to them that are of full Continue, age. continue. Uh -huh. Even those who by reason of use have, have their senses have exercised. Now, have, they now have their senses, spiritual senses exercised. But you are Christians, are now Christian, ladies and gentlemen, who can discern truth from error? You know why we're having a lot of pastoralists like I said when I was beginning? It's because many of them are either on the refreshment or they are trying to. But I think many are still on refreshment. That is why any wind of doctrine can just pull them. Mature Christians have exercised their sense of discernment. They know what to do, when to do, how to do it. Unfortunately, these are few in the church. And yet the Lord expects us to get to that level. 
Somebody say amen. amen. You see, mature Christians have exercised their sense of sight. They have exercised their sense of hearing. They have exercised it. They can know when the spirit of God is speaking. Maturity. And ladies and gentlemen, when you get to that point, even the goodies that come your way are for those that exercise their sight. This is when now you can tell us confidently, God has blessed me. God has given me this. He has given me territory. He has given, he has blessed me. You know, it's when you can stand and tell, praise the name of the Lord, amen. God gave me a house. That is maturity. Amen. Goodies don't come to babies. If you need to have the miracles that when the world looks at, they say, indeed, these people have a God. That is the point of maturity. Hello? Listen, Hebrews 6, verse 1 to 3. Listen to what the Bible says. This one now you are able to make a good informed decision making. Hebrews 6, verse 1. Yes. Therefore, leaving the principles Therefore, of Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine. Doctrine of Christ. Of Christ. Let us go on. Let us maturity. go on unto maturity. Ah! Not laying again. Not laying again. You see, any time. <laughs> any time the Christians are not yet there. Do you know what we are doing? Do you know what? You, you know what? Do you know that you make your pastor? Let me give you the mystery of this. But Mr. Ch <laughs> Anytime the church has not yet grown and matured in the word, you are sending your pastor back to the foundation levels. Instead of building, you know a house, there's a point when you, put, when you put the foundation. You build the foundation and then you put the mortar and the slab and everything. Then you begin the brick levels. Anytime the church is not mature, you are sending the pastor always to go back to foundation, to be digging foundation. Can you imagine? Instead of putting the bricks and the, and the, and the, and the window sill, you are still on. Pastor Mafuta Tagaina, who said it is you? Because you do not understand what you're supposed to be doing. You are always sending your pastor back to the foundation. Instead of him adding bricks, you having a complete house. Instead of the pastor helping you put the roof on your house, you're always breaking foundation. You're sending your pastor back to let GTU. Put mortar, put stones. You're always sending the pastor back there. Then you begin. Who lied you? God have mercy upon us. I'm telling you because until when we grow up in the word, we're always going to be getting foundational miracles, foundation blessings. Yeah? I don't hear you. Hello? Nowadays I'm told from Nazareth. Yes, yes, sir. Hmm? You cannot expect to see powerful manifestation. But now, <laughs> Tell me, it is high time you go to the level of maturity because mature Christians will also see mature manifestations. Otherwise, nowadays everyone graduates. I'm told even in nursery school, they graduate, they put on the gowns and they say, <laughs> unless when you want those graduation parties of the nursery school, top class, what have you graduated from? From top class to P1. <laughs> and that is what many Christians are into. You have graduated, but it's from top class to P1 because they also put on gowns. When you look at the point where they say it is bachelor's in, in computer science or bachelor's in commerce, when you look at there, so that means this time by force we are going to ask the spirit of God to grant you a maturity in the word. Finish it up. It says the basics of <laughs> it is so funny, yes. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Listen, and then he gives works. the examples. Repentance from dead works. Uh -huh. And of faith toward God. Faith towards God. He's saying those are <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Paul talks, talks of faith towards God as just the foundation the element. <laughs> So in other words, that means Paul, these guys saw manifestation of miracles. Maybe they saw hands growing back. <laughs> they saw legs growing up in people, yet they had been cut off. When are we going to experience that? Ladies and gentlemen, it takes the church to get out from the level of milk and water. Yeah? You know the Bible says, he told the, the Israelites, I'm taking, to, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and in other words, I was telling you, I'm taking you to a land, but until when you, 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 you 
or you are out of this I just want to give you the milk and honey. Do you know I discovered when I was asking myself, does milk grow from soil? What happens when you have to get milk? You get a cow. You feed it. Eh? Because you cannot make what is not there. Then, when it has milk, you do what? Honey. Do you grow a crop called honey? <laughs> what happened? You go and first put you put protective gear where bees are. <laughs> I, I, am I talking to someone? You don't get honey that, oh, let me wait after nine months, the honey is going to come. I've put a crop called honey. Uh, seed, we've put honey seeds there and it is going to grow. You go where bees are. Displace them. Enter and get the honey. That's maturity. finish up. Of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and Can you imagine the doctrine of, of baptisms? <laughs> These are ele <laughs> elementary. Doctrine of baptisms, yes, laying, on of, laying hands. on of hands uh -huh. and of resurrection, resurrection of, of the dead. dead. Do you know people who still don't believe that there's resurrection of the dead? Uh -huh. And, and of eternal judgment. And eternal judgment. Do you know people who say, is the heaven you're talking about still, is it there? Can you imagine? He says that is just fundamental. See, I, 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 I one of the guys I would want to ask questions when I get to heaven is going to be Paul. Because this guy, it seems so enough when he was in his time. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So get to the solid food level. Hallelujah. I wonder by saying this, the last is the honey level. When you get honey, your life is sweet. Amen. Your life is sweet. Just read Proverbs 24, 13 and then we are out of here. 24, 13 to 14. May your life be sweet. That is when you stand in the place of kings and princes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It's when now the Lord begins to reveal unto you the realities of dominion. You do not just be an ordinary Christian. You are a Christian that rules. But read it for me. What does the Bible say? Proverbs 24, 13. What does the Bible say? My son. My son. Eat honey. Eat honey. Because it is good. Because it is good. And the honeycomb. And the honeycomb. Which is sweet to your taste. Which is sweet to your what? Which is sweet to your what? Let me tell you, when you get to that level, are you done? 14. When you get to the level, even your test changes. The test. Let me tell you, let me, you you've not yet, how many say we want to test the kind, there's a certain kind of Christian life that we need to test. That one that David said, test and say that the Lord is good. There are certain, let me tell you, for years, because you're you are saying survive and say that the Lord is, is merciful. Let me tell you, you are going to change that statement from survive and say that the Lord is merciful for test and say that the Lord is merciful. Test, not T-E-S-T, -E but test, T-A-S-T-E. -E. That means you are filled with goodness. When you look to your left and your right, your name is called wonder. Your other name is called prosperity. Your other name is called favor. When you sleep in the night, it is what covers you. It is God's abundance that covers you. Let me tell you, it is possible. How do you tell me Solomon, who, they did not have a gold man in Israel, Pastor Juliet, mm -hmm. but the streets of Israel were filled with gold. Yes. Right. Solomon did not have mine in Israel. In Israel. He did not have it. Mm -hmm. When you get to the place of dominion, you access you may not have it here, but you can access it. You call that which is far and it becomes real to you like it is here. Finish it up. We want to Verse pause. 14. Yes. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto your soul. My goodness. When you have found it. Hallelujah. There, then there shall be a reward and your hope shall not be cut off. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the highest level is the wine level, but that one, because of time, we're not dwelling there. But I want you, in this moment, I want you to check yourself. That place you need let me tell you as a church at least by now we should either at least be in the solid food or the honey level i pray that as we get back into self-evaluation see we've been in a time of prayer and fasting seeking god i pray that when the lord visits us he will not say ah. when the angel comes he will not say ah when the, you know that sometimes when the angel comes with packages you pray father give me mansion of one billion give me ah, give me more wedding of this ah, the, the, the god says angel michael please hurry up my son is praying when the angel comes he finds baby in diaper ba 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 he say hey see this is not the owner of the place <laughs> this is not the owner of the things see, I pray that when, when he releases it, he'll find you that you'll be ready for what he's releasing. I'm telling you, it is so serious. May you mature in the level of the word of God in your life. God bless you. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. 
Oh my God. 